This morning, I want to talk to you about the evidence of grace. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 9. It says, For it is by grace you have been saved. Through faith in Christ Jesus, and not by your own efforts or works. I want you to think for a moment. There are some key thoughts here. Number one, for it is by grace you have been saved. Not grace alone, but through faith in Christ Jesus. Not by what you do, your works, but by grace and faith. Nothing you did could ever earn this salvation, for it was the love gift from God that brought us to Christ Jesus. So no one will ever be able to boast, for salvation is never a reward for good works or human striving. And so I want us to understand as we live our lives in grace that faith in Christ Jesus brings you under the canopy of his grace. What is it? Faith in Christ Jesus brings you under the canopy of his grace, the covering of his grace. And so it is not what I do, it's not how I earn his favor and his grace, but simply because I have put my faith in Jesus Christ and Christ alone, that now I reside under the canopy of His grace. So how does grace become evident in our lives? How is it fleshed out in our everyday lives? How is it evident to us as we look at our lives and examine our own lives? How does it become evident to people around us? I believe that our lives must tell the story of the grace of God. That becomes the evidence which is visible and tangible and identifiable to those around us, beginning with your home, your spouse, your husband, your wife, your parents, your children, they need to see evidence of the grace of God that is at work in you because of your faith in Jesus Christ. The Bible calls us to be salt and light. This morning I want to focus in on salt. And it's going to be an analogy that's going to come through in a moment. Salt adds flavor. And we know that light brings uh, uh, brings hope and t dispels darkness. But in Galatians chapter 3 verse 1, Paul writes to the believers because he wants to correct that thinking. There were people who had experienced the power of God at work in their lives. There were people like you and me who loved God and wanted to know more of God, were walking in faith with God. But he throws something really strong with them right at the onset of Galatians chapter 3 verse 1. In his letter to them, he says, Who has bewitched you? Another translation says, What happened to you foolish Galatians? Who has put you under an evil spell? Now we understand evil spells. We understand that concept here in India. We have the evil eye. And there was a, symbol, a similar thought and concept in that culture that people could cast an evil eye on you that would then confuse you and take away your clarity of understanding and knowing God. And Paul is speaking to the believers. And why is he saying that? Because the believers had stopped relying on the faith of Jesus Christ and living under the grace of God. And he noticed that it became evident that they were trying to work out their salvation. They were trying to live under the law instead of enjoying the, the covering of grace. And the law is something that's great. It kind of makes you feel like you're doing something to keep God happy, to do what's right and 
to do all those kind of things. And he says, guys, guys, let's get back to basics. Those things don't save you. Those things don't bring you closer to God. The law, in fact, drew people away from God. They were trying to justify themselves by how they lived their good lives. And he said, no goodness, no kindness, no amount of what you do and give away to the poor or whatever you do is going to make you acceptable to God other than you coming to him in faith and living and experiencing the grace of God. And so also for you and me. We've got to make sure in our lives of living our lives under the grace of God that we don't slip into the failure that the Galatians slipped into and in trying to live their lives by working out to please God. Now it does not mean, let's bring balance to this, and every grace teaching has this balance. Grace is never the absence of a life of discipline. Can I say that again? A life of grace is never the absence of a life of discipline. It doesn't mean to say that I can do what I want. Romans 6 chapter 1 verse 2 says, So what do we do then? Do we persist, persist in sin so that God's kindness and grace will increase? What a terrible thought, Paul says. Um, let me say that again. So what do we do then? Do we persist in sin so that God's kindness and grace will increase? More sin, more grace. And so I sin more because grace will abound to me. Paul says, no, 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 no. What a terrible thought. We have died to sin once and for all. And so we live in and under the grace of and in faith with Jesus Christ. Andrew Womack says, faith appropriates what God has already provided. Faith doesn't move God. He isn't the one who is stuck. Faith doesn't make God do anything. Grace and faith work together. And our part is to accept what God has already done and grace must be balanced with faith. Can we say that? Grace must be balanced with faith. Many emphasize grace and others emphasize faith. But too few emphasize balancing grace and faith. So grace is the understanding of what God has done. Faith is appropriating that work in our lives and exercising and living and that faith always leads to acts of righteousness. Because you cannot commit sin in faith. When you are living a life of sin, you are not living by faith. And here's where salt comes in. I have this bowl of salt with me. This is good old pink Himalayan salt. And Andrew Womack draws this wonderful comparison. He says it's like sodium and chloride. Sodium and chloride. Taken individually, sodium will kill you and chloride can kill you. But when mixed together, sodium chloride is what salt is which you and I must have together. We must have the faith of Jesus Christ and the grace of God, inseparable, working in our lives. So our expression of living our lives under the canopy of grace by faith is like salt. Amen. The composition of salt, which is why Jesus said he wants us to be not chloride, or not sodium but he wants us to be salt and light and if you're just sodium and somebody else is trying to be chloride we're two extremes and it's not balanced it's not in keeping with scripture but scripture brings out the truth to be salt in this world to add flavor to make a difference and when our lives are lived in that way 
grace is evident when people take a look at our lives. When mixed together, they become salt, which you must have to live. Grace without your positive response of faith won't save you. And faith that isn't a response to God's grace will bring you into condemnation. But put your faith in what God has already done for you and you have the victory that you can overcome the world. I love this little thought from Andrew Womack. So how is faith evident in my life? How is faith evident in your life? How do we know that faith and grace are operating in our lives? I've drawn up seven simple things that help us to understand that there is evidence upon evidence that grace is working in my life. Number one, and I want you to write these down if you will. This is simple but powerful. Grace enables you to be confident to be. Be who God has called you to be. Titus 3, 7 says, Because of His grace, He has made us right in His sight and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. So grace gives you the confidence to be you. Amen. The second thing is of evidence of grace in your life is grace enables you to grow. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 says, God is able to make all grace abound to you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. So when the evidence of grace is you grow. The third evidence of grace is you stay low. James chapter 4 and verse 6 says, God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. When you are living under the canopy of grace, you recognize, like Paul said, I am who I am because of his grace that God bestows upon me. I, all my success, all my achievements, all my doings and happenings in my life, I attribute to the grace of God. It means that you have surrendered your life to Jesus Christ and you are walking humbly before him and before this world, living a life of humility. Grace empowers you to stay low. The fourth thing of the evidence of grace in your, in your life is that you draw near to God. Hebrews chapter 4, 16 says, Let us then, with confidence, draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I love this uh, picture of the throne of grace. I don't know about you, but have you ever approached somebody that is an authority figure over your life? Maybe a parent or maybe your, your, your boss at work. And if you have a request from them, from him, if you want something from them, or if you've kind of messed up at work, isn't it true that in some way when you have to meet them, when you come across them, there's always your heart is pounding, that sense of anxiety and nervousness because they are in authority over you. You don't really approach them with confidence because you're not confident that they will treat you right. But Hebrews chapter 4, 16 says, whatever state you're in, now that you are under the grace of God, now that you are a child of God, you can draw near to Him. You can draw near to the throne of grace that you might find and receive mercy 
and grace to help you in your time of need. The fifth evidence of grace at work in our lives is the power to say no. Titus 2, 11 to 14 says, For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say, everyone together, the two-letter word, no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope. And so you've got to understand, for you to live your lives free from sin, for you to live your life every day in tolerance with one another, in being more understanding with one another, in not losing our cool, in not developing bad habits in our lives of communication and relationship with one another, but living our lives in a godly way, the grace of God empowers you to say no. Oh, you want to say yes to getting back at somebody. But then you remember how gracious God has been to you. And say, God, if you have been so gracious to a wicked sinner like me, how much more gracious do I need to be to somebody else? And I'm going to say no to wanting to get even with them. I'm going to say no to wanting to hurt them, to be jealous with them, to be negative towards them. I'm going to say no to ungodliness and to worldly passions. The sixth thing of the evidence of grace in our lives is grace enables us to do. 1 Peter chapter 4, 10 says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have. Now I want you to look at your hands and assume this is a sum total of everything that God has given you, finances, wealth, uh, time, energy, uh, talents, and everything that you have, and say, God, 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 tell me, each of you, the Bible says, should use whatever, not, oh, I love the gift that that person has, and if I had that gift, then I could do something for God. No, it says whatever gift you have received, you serve one another as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. A church is alive and active, a community of God's people, which is the church of God, fulfills its assignment on the earth when each one of you use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. So understand, here at Life, we as leaders want to release you into your work of service for the kingdom. Whether it's your place of work, it's in the community, it's in the community of the church, it's in society, wherever you are, understand whatever the gift is, use it. Because it is a gift of grace that is there to bless other people. And the last, the seventh element of evidence of grace in our lives is the grace to go. Ephesians 3, 7, 8 says, For this gospel was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given me by the working of his power. To me, though I am the very least of the saints, and this is Paul talking, this grace was given. What was the grace given to Paul for? To preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of God. So please understand, in this year of God's unlimited grace and unprecedented favor, it is not there so as we can have a holy huddle in our little bubble and have a party celebrating the grace of God. It is ultimately given to us that, like Paul said, the least of all saints, this grace was given to preach to those people that don't know the unsearchable riches of Christ. 
And so, what are the seven evidences of grace in our lives? Let's quickly recap that. Grace, confident to be you. Grace means that you grow. The evidence of grace at work in your life, it means that you know how to stay low and walk humbly. The evidence of grace at work in your life is that you desire to draw near to God with confidence and you know that you can. The fifth evidence of grace is the power to say no. The sixth evidence of grace is the power to do. And the final seventh evidence is the power to go. I want you, I want every one of us at Life Church to live our lives identifying and knowing that grace is at work in our lives and that it is evident that we are living under the canopy of grace by faith and that our lives will be well lived for God on this earth in this year for his glory amen i pray god has spoken to every one of you this morning i know god's word always makes its mark in our lives i want us as we come to this time of communion to ask ourselves god have i been fooled and bewitched to begin to think that i've got to do things all on my own that I've got to work things out and try and uh, justify myself to you or have I already been justified by the love and the grace in faith in Jesus Christ God this morning I pray every one of us will notice and clearly see the evidence of grace at work in our lives and that we will live our lives in and under the canopy of grace this year. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.